Hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comfort Level Podcast. We hope your new year is, has been good. Welcome to the new year with the Comfort Level Podcast, and let's listen to some stories. Yay! <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort the Level Podcast. fourth time we've done <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Callie. Brandon. Sam. We just got done with a pretty intense workout because, you know, it's January and we got our workout goals. It'd be like that. Yeah. It do you know? be like that. It absolutely be like that. I can't promise that my workout goals will be the same in a week, but that's the trying. whole point of like goals. New year, new me. New year, new you for like five seconds. Five yeah. seconds. And then Yeah. Same then it's what is it? Then it's like new new then year it's like same back me. Back off worry about yourself yeah and then oh. mind your business you never then... heard that saying no that's the first then it's me. like literally focus on yourself grow your grass don't worry about me growing my grass wow, you never great. heard that no saying? <laughs> that's very it's specific. A pretty popular saying yeah it's, it's pretty great it's like especially like there's like an influx like if you look on the the phrases that are used charts like there's like an influx of that like right after I don't new think year's. that's true yeah that's true. right after new year's right after new year's okay yeah yeah right after new year's you know what? I'm actually going to make a goal today, and I want to promise you, I'm going to promise the viewers, I will gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling everyone that I will gain weight. By the end of this year, I will be heavier than I am now. That's a good goal. Yeah. That's something I I'm going to stay strong. That's a realistic goal. I'm going to stay strong to that. That's yeah. my goal. Okay. How much? Mm, let's give me 50 pounds. 50 pounds? <laughs> I'm going to give me 50 pounds. That's my goal. I'm going to chunk up. Okay. I'm gonna chunk, chunk. Bulk up and then what? Like next year, continue bulking up or going? I think I'll probably keep going up and up, <laughs> hitting that record every time, get that record high. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the so the record is just is, is there going to be a stopping point? Like when you're like okay. Right now I'm just I'm playing it by ear, but I'm thinking now. Okay. I'm trying to get on like what's that show? Uh, My 500 pound life. Oh. That's the goal. Okay. I'm trying to be a celebrity. That's your new year, new me goal. New year, new me. A lot of me's. <laughs> Twice as much as me's. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's a very different goal than I think a lot of yeah, people have. Yeah, I don't think I would. But I'm trying to be realistic because now if I'm like, oh, I messed up on my goal, I lost weight. So it's either good or bad. It's good. Okay. Both are good, right? Yeah. I mean, in a roundabout way, yes. That's all I care about. But right roundabout now. ways are not good. They're very good. <laughs> I either get big, make my goal, or get smaller, and that's good. Oh, wow. Yeah, what are you going to do? Don't ever hit me like that. <laughs> Boop. You just booped you. I will promise you, you will never make your goal. Boop. Just immediately starts fighting. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope he becomes skinny. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't put that on me. <laughs> I hope you're thinner no. than a mint. How dare I you? I hope you're thinner than a thin mint. No, <laughs> but in a healthy way. Thank you, Maddie. That means a lot. Because I care about your health. So, if 50 pounds more is gonna make you healthy, yeah. I hope he never sees 50 pounds more. <gasps> Dang, Maddie. You hear what he said? Your boyfriend. I hope you run every day well, by accident. Well, you did boop him on the nose twice. <laughs> I run on accident every day. <laughs> like he gets chased by a yeah. <laughs> That would suck if I exercised on accident every day. Ugh. It's just like a it's just like a person for like the Red Cross. Like, yeah. hey, can you donate? No, no I don't want to. The well, next day, know, you can't ride in a car with Brandon because he's just gonna drop you off on the interstate. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you you would. five o'clock traffic too, oh, so you gotta no. run out. You gotta <laughs> run out. <laughs> Stop wishing these things on him. Why do you Let's hate get to the first story. Because you Brandon. boop me. Oh, I did. Twice. Multiple no, I times. I do remember that. No, now that you bring that up, I do remember doing that. And I do. <laughs> that did happen. That I was a vendetta. That was crazy. That and then I did before that. you like chiseled his cheek. Like, Those are things that happen, but you said you're going to cut them out. They're not actually going to be. I didn't. Say you said you're going to cut them out. No, this is my vendetta. Let's make sure they're cut out of the podcast so no one sees that. I hope everybody sees it and cancels you. <laughs> 
for booping in It'll public. Be the fifth time I'm canceled on this show. <laughs> My tape broke. <laughs> Wait, you've been canceled to... before? No, somehow not. I say a oh, lot of problematic me? things and no one has canceled me. Yet. All right. <laughs> Sam, just you, lady. you should have yeah. lied. She was trying to connect oh, with was, Oh, yeah. She Gosh. had no one. She had nobody. I know I'm so nope. Here. Uncanceled. <laughs> <laughs> Please cancel him right now so that you can be. I feel like there's a lot of things I've said on here that I probably should have been killed before and nothing. (laughs) Man, that's the patriarchy, though. Am I right? It's because I'm a feminist, I guess. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend that being depressed is not an excuse for being lazy? (laughs) No. It's the silent <laughs> laughing from you. Why are you silently laughing? Because that's like one of the most obvious titles I've ever heard <laughs> that we've ever done. That's just a bad title. There's no way you can redeem yourself. Mm. Yes? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a... Yeah, you are. Oh. <laughs> you are the asshole. Yeah, the, the poster. Mm, mm. That's what I was saying. Okay. But- <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend that being depressed is not an excuse for being lazy? I, 29, have always supported my girlfriend, 23. We've been together for four years now and live together. Oh, that kind of. She was 23? Yeah, he's 29. 29. Okay. She, she's 23. We have been together for four years now and live together for one. She has always had anxiety as well as depression where some months are worse than others. I have supported her through all of this and understand it's very hard for her. In January, she lost her job due to current world circumstances and by March, she hit a low point with not eating as much, crying, irritability, typical traits of depression. I have comforted her as much as possible and taken care of everything. However, at the beginning of June, I was allowed back to work, and since the house has fallen to shambles, I'm too tired by the time I come home to do anything, even cook. Most nights we order takeout, and on rare occasions, she makes food. The floors aren't being washed, hoovering isn't being done, laundry is a mountain, and dishes are everywhere. I try to keep on top of it, but with work, it's almost impossible. She is home all day. She lies in bed till afternoon, watches Netflix, eats bowls of cereal, and naps. That's about it. I've tried to gently coax her to do more, and she says she will get to it, but she never does. I finally snapped and told her I was sick of doing I was sick of her doing nothing all day and leaving the housework for me, that if she's here and I'm working, she needs to be pulling her weight. She got upset and said that she wants to, but she never finds the motivation, that she is tired all the time. I say I understand that she's depressed, but it isn't an excuse to do nothing and be lazy. No one likes housework, but I won't take any more excuses about it. She needs to start doing it or leave. Next day, I come home to a clean house and a note from her saying she was sorry and is going to stay with her mother. Her mom helped her clean before they left. I tried calling, but she wouldn't pick up. When I rang the house, her mom answered and had a lot to say. She was furious, telling me about how she is struggling and I'm making it worse. That I should be supporting her Uh, not ignoring that she is in a bad place, and so on. I was told my girlfriend had been crying all day in her bedroom, and I feel awful. I never wanted to hurt her. I just snapped. I tried to get her mother to give my girlfriend the phone, but she wouldn't speak to me. I feel like it's a lose-lose situation. On one hand, I know depression results in lack of motivation and cleanliness, and on the other hand, I can't stand to see our home in such chaos. I have never had depression, so I can't say for sure how badly it is. That's why I find it difficult to 100% emphasize. Am I the asshole for telling her that depression isn't an excuse? Um, I think I stick with my answer that no, he's not the asshole. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's frustrating and you certainly can be understanding to a point. But if you're dealing with that every day, it's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. I want to know Sam's reaction, or what, what he was thinking, because he made like a real reaction when she was talking. It was in the face. I saw it. When? I saw it out of the corner of my eye. You said. Well, because the first, the 29, 23 thing threw me off of how he was, but I don't think it really factors into this that much. I, I don't know. It's tough. I think this is probably why I won't. It's going to be unlikely that I get into a real long-term relationship because of these kind of things where I'm like, okay, I know, 
I think I'm more on Cali side where I'm like, yeah, it's tough, but hey, you got to like do something. Like it might be hard, but you got to do something. And I've been depressed where I'm like, man, I don't want to do anything. But I know if someone else was relying on me to do something, I'm like, well, I got to buck up and do something about it. It's hard to be like, your only excuse is like, I'm depressed. And so you're not going to do anything about it just because you're depressed. That might be hard. That might be cold. And maybe yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. So, yeah, I think I agree with Callie where I'm like, yeah, I don't think you're really the asshole for this. I feel like if you were depressed and you were, like, everything was messy and you cleaned, that you would feel better. Because everything's not messy and you're up and moving. But Well, that's the weird thing where I'm like, I felt depressed and I've gotten, like, messy. I don't do anything. I don't do any cleaning my house. I don't do any hygiene. And doing cleaning does get you up, but you just don't want to do it. Like, yeah. I know this will make me feel better but I still can't get the energy to do it. So that's the rough part. Yeah. I think from like a scientific standpoint too, I don't know, like, cause people have different imbalances Yeah. when it comes to depression. So it's like some people really are, it's really that bad. Like even someone saying like, you're being a bum, just go do something. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. Cause you got to think about the whole like like they're they're in that state because it's like it's involuntary like it's like they don't want to be depressed no one wants no one wants to right. be depressed yeah and i don't i don't know if i want to say anything more because it's like i haven't necessarily i went through spurts where i was sad but i've never i don't know if i've ever been actually depressed mm-hmm. so it's like you know you you can't really speak for people that have been through something like that. It's just, I don't know. It's a, I feel like, though, like, you have to be supportive either way. Like, there's, like, just better ways to do it. Because it, did it say how he said it to her? Well, actually, now that you say that, because he said something about, like, he just kind of snapped. Yeah, something like that. Snapped. So, so it's like, man, how bad did you snap? <laughs> how bad did you snap to make her, like, literally leave and no comms and she cleaned the house on the way out she cleaned her house on the way out yeah but it's like you you did something what do you think maddie um i agree with everybody i think that i don't really think that he's the asshole um i can't speak on her or like really like depression because i've dealt with like uh I don't think I, like with Brandon, I don't think I've dealt with depression before. I feel like I've dealt with anxiety, but I've never been to therapy to under to understand all those feelings. But um, yeah, I, I've i dealt with like the moments where, cause me and Sam like low key bonded over this over one of the podcasts where it's like you kind of get in like a fit of where you, you don't really want to do anything. You have a lot of lack of motivation and you don't, clean yourself as much when you're like when I was younger that's how it was but um I it wasn't like a thing where it was like weeks on end it was a week and then I would shower (laughs) and then I would do it again (laughs) and then I would do it again but yeah so um but I do get what with what you're saying of like if and and what with what you're saying if you would get the energy to get up and clean your house and make it a cleaner space if that's what you have the energy to to do it would make you feel better because i can't tell you how many times i've done that and a cleaner space just makes me feel a lot calmer but about the depression thing and what she's going through i don't even have any like suggestions of like how to help that situation because i'm like i don't know what would be pushing them too far or just enough to get them moving to where like maybe in the future they're like hey thank you for doing that or if it was like yeah i didn't appreciate that like that was too much yeah i don't know Uh, i've been depressed and i didn't have the luxury of not doing anything yeah because you still gotta get up and you still gotta go to work you still gotta pay your bills you still gotta take care of your space Mm -hmm. Um, yeah i think the best thing you can do in a relationship is just be like the thing you probably should have done is like this is how I feel based on how we live right now. And yeah. I, I don't like this. Communicate with that. Yeah. And try to do it in a positive way and saying, 
anything I can do to help you, blah, blah, blah. But if it continues, that's when I'm like, okay. Because I don't know what he did. Maybe he did try before, but if there was no communication, then she doesn't know what to expect from a relationship either way. Mm. You got to want to help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a whole update post about this. Oh, no. Um, They're married. <laughs> they broke up. <laughs> Uh, so the update is, ultimately, I realized that a majority of the blame was mine. I never should have ever called her lazy because that is what she is. I lashed out and I shouldn't have. I stayed at her, she stayed at her mother's for a few days and we eventually met up to talk. I told her how it was, it just got to be too much for me, but it was no excuse for me lashing out and I apologize. She apologized also, not that she needed to, and we talked for a long time about how we can make our relationship work. I expressed my concerns over her therapist who is very against anything other than talking therapy. She agreed that he didn't seem to be really, to really have her best interest at hearts and she's currently looking for somebody new. For now, I suggested she stop looking for work. She got a lot of rejections and I could see it was upsetting her more. And I just felt like we should take a step back from that and I want her to focus a little bit more on herself. She was unsure as she felt bad that I would be working for both of us, but I assured her it is fine. I make enough to support us both quite comfortably. I also suggested maybe she could volunteer at some point and get some more stuff on her resume. I'm no therapist, so these were just my suggestions, but it seemed to have taken some of the pressure off her, which is all I wanted. We agreed that being in the apartment all day alone and in bed is not good for her, so we came up with the plan that she can do an exercise video three times a week. It's only a 10 minute one just so she is doing something. She's found that she likes doing them and they make her feel a bit better after and has started something called yin yoga now. To help me, she has one chore a day to do. I don't care what it is. It could be dishes or it could just be putting the laundry in the hamper. I make sure to show my appreciation for whatever she has done, no matter how small it is. We have set out that every Sunday we will have deep cleaning days where we get everything done for the week. This has been super successful and we make it fun and just mess around while still getting things done. Ooh. It makes the week a lot more <laughs> It makes the week a lot more manageable. <laughs> Bien, bienvenidos. 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 It makes the week a lot more manageable when we only have light chores to keep on top of. She's trying more and I'm also working on being more supportive about her depression. I'm researching it more and learning ways that I can help her because it is part of her. We're both putting more effort in and communicating a lot better. I just hope she we keep making progress because I do love her very much and I want us to work. Good for them. It seems like those were all the suggestions that you guys were giving. Pretty good. Pretty good. Actually, I do think he's the asshole though now from that update. Yeah. Because he was, did a little humble brag in there. He was like, I make enough to support us both comfortably. I'm kind of a little wealthy. He's an asshole for saying that. He didn't have to say that. I'm You're like, I'm mad about that. I am mad about that. What a jerk. He's a jerk. I agree. But you know what helped this whole situation? What? A Roomba. Yeah. That guy was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> a Roomba would have fixed this entire thing. <laughs> Am I the asshole for calling my body positive coworker unhealthy, deluded, and bitter after some rude comments <gasps> she made about me? Whoa! Yes. Whoa! Oh my gosh! There's, oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Oh no! We're gonna get into body positivity. I don't want to be. I, I know. Cancel for this. Wrong side of TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a horrible no, side no. of TikTok. Well, hey, look. You guys kept your your. You didn't say anything crazy. Right. So we'll just go right into it. But after, I probably will say something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you don't, don't care about being if, canceled. If you're you body positive, I do want to be that canceled. That is your goal that is my for goal. 2020. So, yeah. If you're body positive, don't go to the YouTube. <laughs> Especially well, don't watch his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know what's about to happen. So, I mean, we do. But <laughs> we do. Sam's like, this is my opportunity. This I'm going it. to take it. To be toxic. It. Yeah, I love it. Am I the asshole for calling my body positive coworker unhealthy, deluded, and bitter after some rude comments she made about me. I'm currently working part-time at a restaurant on my university's campus. I mostly work shifts with this one girl, we'll call her Anna, who is all for body positivity movement. She embraces her body type and regularly posts inspiring quotes or images on social media accounts. 
Personally, I have nothing against that at all. I'm also in full support of treating and accepting everybody no matter their body type. However, I do believe that everyone should be healthy, eating right, exercising, taking care of their mental health, etc. Or at least attempting to. I don't support those who use the body positivity movement to cloak or shield and justify their unhealthy and damaging behaviors. However, despite being a supporter, Anna regularly comments on my body type. For example, I always bring food for my shift since I personally think the food there is not the healthiest. Burgers, fries, more fried food, etc. Anna will often say things like, you should eat a burger, or you could use a few extra pounds, honey, or you look skinnier than last week. I told you to stop eating salads every day, haha. <laughs> She'll sometimes even feign concern for me and ask me in private if I was struggling with my weight, and then proceed to tell me that I look way too skinny to be healthy. I, one time I was changing into my work shirt in the back and Anna saw my stomach and commented that my stomach was starting to look like a man's. I have no idea what that means, but I doubt it was a compliment. These hypocritical comments have pissed me off. I enjoy eating healthy and cooking my own foods, and I enjoy working out and staying toned. Anna, on the other hand, gorges herself on the food in our restaurant, drinks about three cans of Coke per shift, and does not work out. I don't think this is healthy. Finally, during yesterday's shift, this guy I kind of like came in to get some food, and I was super excited to see him. He turned out to be a bit cold towards me, and the whole event was a bit anticlimactic. Oh well. Anna witnessed the whole thing, and after he left, she said, maybe he's into curvier girls. I basically blew up at her and called her out for all of her hypocrisy. I asked her how she could call herself a supporter of body positivity when she regularly shamed my body. Then I told her that she was unhealthy in many ways. I called her out on her eating habits, being bitter and jealous of others who are in control of their bodies and health, and deluded for believing that she is healthy and fit. She called me insecure and told me I was being a rude bitch. It was reaching the end of our shift, so I clocked out early and left so that I didn't have to argue with her anymore. I was mad for a bit and told one of my best friends. She said that I was right and all, but I was being insensitive in the way I brought it up and suggested that I should apologize. I'm standing my ground, but I want to hear other opinions as well. I feel like uh, I have a controversial outlook on it. Oh, let's hear um, it. That's what we want to hear. Kind of scared, but can't say that. 2.0. Way. <laughs> By the way, um, I've always been naturally thin, and I like people always like, go eat a cheeseburger, like, go eat this or whatever, just eat eat food and I feel like if that if I were to like say that to someone who was big like just eat a salad that mm. it wouldn't be the same and so I do kind of feel like it it can't go both ways you can't say whatever you want to somebody who's skinny but then not want something said to you she shouldn't have said that but if I'm like body positive that's for everybody that's not just curvier girls mm-hmm People have eating disorders. I mean, you never know if somebody like goes home and throws up all their lunch and then you're right. like, I don't know. Yeah, there was something that I heard recently uh, within like the past year where it was like not encouraged to like uh, celebrate people when you see them being skinnier. And it wasn't necessarily something that I understood at first until it was kind of explained to me like, um, especially if they're not like, outwardly being like hey look at me like I've lost weight they might have done it in I like a very unhealthy way yeah. like you were saying because of like an eating disorder or whatever reason whatever they were doing and so you like encouraging that behavior could encourage the way that it happened which I thought was really interesting but also um my sister Hannah is also very skinny and Thank she can eat whatever her. she wants her out. you said it several times yeah <laughs> and um She's gone through the same thing where I've literally been around her and people will be like, oh my God, girl, you need to eat something. Hannah is literally eats all the time. Like yeah. she, she just has a really high metabolism. And it's funny because most of the time it like doesn't affect her. But when she is at the house, sometimes you can see her like talking and is a little irritable about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think it's, I, I agree. I don't think it's fair for people to comment on your body just because you are like the desired like body type. You know, like being skinnier is something that a lot of people seem to want or the like what the uh, like m the modeling industry seems yeah. to portray is like how like women should look. The jab of like, well, maybe he would like here to be curvier. Yeah. Like, yeah. how is that supposed to be a 
Like, how can you take that in a positive way at all? That's just like someone saying, like, maybe we like you if you were skinnier. Ex- like, it's the exact same yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. I think there's a conversation going around, um, but it's like the whole idea of certain groups get protected. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for her to say that, she, for her to say that to a girl that claims to be body positive, like, people would see that and be like, People would hear that and like in writing, like I I told a body positive person, you know, she need uh, or being unhealthy is not an excuse for being body, whatever she said, you know, people won't see that that was an attack towards a person just like one to one. They see it as an attack towards body positivity. But mm-hmm. it's like the whole thing, like I think it is a, a double edged sword or like a double standard because if you're not body if you're body positive you're not just body positive towards the, everybody yeah it's body positive period mm-hmm. like you just everybody like you just be acceptable and like positive who you are and how you are shaped mm-hmm. like point blank like you know so it's like the fact that she's like going against body positivity a body positive person like the girl probably gets protected more the girl that's probably the more unhealthy. I don't know how to yeah. say it. Yeah, she gets protected more <laughs> because she's like, I'm body positive. Yeah. And it's like, she's using it to abuse the situation. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. It just kind of seems like she's unhappy with herself to constantly be picking on other people, for mm-hmm. sure. So. Yeah, that's. I totally agree. Like, that's when I know you're not body positive. If you're constantly commenting on this girl about her eating salads, when you know you would hate if someone's like, why are you eating all these burgers all the time? Why are you constantly chugging down sodas? That's the part where I was like, oh, maybe this will be problematic because I've heard those same conversations and like there are people like larger people are being protected in the whole social media discourse. You can't say anything bad about a mm-hmm. larger person. Um, you can't say like, which I do agree with what body positivity is like. Do not That's criticize someone on their body. Like do not come at somebody and just like, you're this because you're this size. Mm -hmm. But also, what I think the bad side of body positivity is like, don't celebrate people because of them being bigger. Don't come, don't make fun of them, don't come at them, but don't also say, this is the ideal of what people should be. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, there are a lot of people that are like, they're not healthy, it's not healthy to be so many pounds overweight. Like it's actually bad for your heart. There's like all these health risks. We shouldn't be celebrating it. We shouldn't be making fun of people for it, but we shouldn't be like li- lifting people up and like, you should be like this. Cause I think that's the bad side of body positivity that people like have a hard time saying because you're like, oh, you're just calling like fat people are bad. Like, no, I'm just saying it's not healthy. Yeah, it's yeah. not healthy. It's not good. But I would never come and like, you don't deserve anything. You don't deserve love. You don't deserve something because you're big. Cause that's rude. That's not body positivity. I feel like the people that also abuse that are like it's it's almost like they use avatars, you know? Like this is a standard for what my sect of body positivity believes mm-hmm. and it's like that's perfect. If anybody says anything about that perfect image, I'm coming for them personally myself. But it's like to be people that are just like either just some people are fit and then some people are just like it's like okay, this is not good like it's not a good example. I'm not going to hate on them for it. Yeah, like you were saying, yeah. I'm not going to hate them for it. But it's like, you know, like if you have to, if you're holding too much weight, your bones and stuff start to break down. Yeah. Like, do you want to be, like at what level of body positivity do you choose for your life? Like, yeah. you know, there's a fine I do line. kind of find Sam's answer ironic considering he wants to gain. I do want to gain a lot of weight. <laughs> he wants to gain but I don't want 500 people. pounds. <laughs> If people came at me and were like, I don't want them to say anything about me and make fun of me, like, man, you big, you big in the house. But I wouldn't say this is what everyone should be. This is what everyone should aspire to be. He's like, that's just my goal. It's like, it's heart problems. Big He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Very those. dangerous. I need those heart problems. <laughs> I'm trying to be like the tough this. to get up the stairs, you feel me? Big Sam. Yeah. He said, I, I got an apartment on the first floor. <laughs> my house doesn't have stairs, you know? Because be, if I did actually, like, was 500 pounds, and and I was like, would I get mad about people who are larger when they're like, well, I'm thick? And you're like, well, certain part, there's, like, levels to, like, <laughs> you're not necessarily thick, you're, you're big. 
And we're, they're all like, I'm body positive. Like this thick person, this thick ideal that everyone's like in love with. Like that's me. And you're like, no. That's <laughs> you're not you. I agree. Go and get you a yeah, couple yeah. Roombas to get yeah. you up the stairs. Well, I think your goal for getting canceled is going to come true. After that yeah. one. <laughs> you ain't thinking yeah. that. You're, well, I feel like sometimes. Because <laughs> body positivity is not lying, I don't think. Right. I think for some people it is lying. You're yeah. like, I'm thick. You're like, bro, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I got some bad news yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think this, this, that's, this is thick. What you are are you twice that. Think thicker. A hundred pounds ago. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, should we lie to people? Is lying to people... Because if someone offers it, if someone asks me, I'm like, oh, no. I wouldn't go in there and be like, man, you're big. But if you ask yeah, me, you're like, hey, I'm thick. And you're like, if a big girl no, said you're that, not. you would say, no, you're not thick. You would just be like, you It go, depends girl. in the situation. Okay, like, if she's like, give me your... If I'm on a date? <laughs> if I'm on a date and she was like... Is this a first date or the first date she's asking me? Am I big or am I thick? Okay, not the first date. Because <laughs> if we're dating, up. it comes up. If we're dating for a while, then I'm obviously into it, right? True. Okay, first date. First date. Like, what, what do you think about thickness? You're a crazy. <laughs> I'm like you're crazy for asking me that. You big. <laughs> yeah, you know you big. <laughs> <laughs> like I like I asked you out on a date, so I did want to pay, but I didn't realize this was the amount I was. <laughs> Because of the catfish. <laughs> I came in on a budget. And she did a lot of face selfies, yeah. not body positive. <laughs> yeah, because I do want to correct. If I'm dating someone, I'm not going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> you big as a house. Like, I would really, like, say that. She's because I'm like, break. I decided to be in a relationship Ow. with you. Ow. Right? When nobody's around, yeah. I'm going to fucking roast yeah. you. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> Well, thank you guys for joining me for the Comfort Lover <laughs> podcast. Uh, new year, new us. Yeah, we're Sam, different. we're, we're gonna different. focus on we're being different. more body positive. Yeah. yeah. New year. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I'm gonna be less problematic this year. No, you're not. Yeah, you're gonna I'm be more problematic. You're gonna be more problematic. You started the year <laughs> yeah. off with this I episode. am starting off hot, yeah. But this is it. This is the last day for me. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for the Comfort Level podcast. Thank you, Callie, for joining us. Thank you, Callie. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.